Hundreds more businesses throughout the county finally get the green light to reopen with some modifications. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The governor's new guidelines cover a range of businesses from malls to car washes to pet grooming. News 8's Richard Allen has more on that as the state Senate eyes bold new plans to help Californians who are out of work as well as renters and landlords. Well, that's right. This easing of restrictions means businesses like this one can now get back to work. This car wash, for example, plans to reopen on Monday. But for some other businesses not covered under phase two, they're turning to the courts. Over 70% of our economy in the state of California is open with modifications. As San Diego County and the entire state of California eases even further into phase two of reopening the economy, businesses ranging from car washes to dog groomers are now allowed to reopen, as well as malls from outlets to strip malls for curbside service only. Offices where employees cannot work at home are allowed to reopen, although workers who can still telecommute are encouraged to do so. And while San Diego is not there yet, Governor Gavin Newsom issued guidelines for restaurants once they're eventually allowed to offer dining in service. The guidelines we put out provide more flexibility than I believe some other states. But this pace of reopening is not fast enough for some business owners, including this group of hair salon owners who announced a lawsuit today against the governor, demanding they be permitted to reopen now. Urging through the courts what we could not get from the governor, which is the ability to open the salons now. And as the COVID-19 pandemic persists, California is now facing a $54 billion budget shortfall. State Senate Democrats are now working on a $25 billion economic recovery fund through prepaid future tax vouchers. Which will have the effect of providing economic stimulus now and accelerating future revenues. Another proposal by the Senate aims at providing relief for both renters temporarily unable to pay and their landlords who would forgive rent payments in exchange for transferable tax credits. This is not a giveaway to anyone. It's not a free ride. The Senate is giving tenants and landlords a hand up, not a handout. And to that end, under this proposal, tenants would have 10 years to repay their skipped rents. The goal to keep tenants housed and to keep landlords out of foreclosure. Back to you. Thank you, Richard. Stay at home orders in Los Angeles will likely be extended to August. That's what the county's top doctor suggested at the Board of Supervisors meeting today. The order was originally set to run through this Friday. L.A. County supervisors say changes will be continuously considered after reviewing data for every three or four weeks. Some good news for Angelinos. County beaches are set to reopen tomorrow for limited activities. The county saw a big jump in coronavirus deaths today. 15 more San Diegans have died. They ranged in age from 56 to 91. All had underlying health conditions. 96 new coronavirus cases were reported, bringing the total number to 5,161. Those cases are about 4% of the 2,440 tests reported today, which is still far below the daily goal of 5,200. For the first time since the start of the pandemic, the city of San Diego was addressing the surge in coronavirus cases crossing the border into San Diego. Officials attribute the influx to legal crossings from Tijuana. News 8's Lamore Abrams reports on what officials are now doing to get a handle on the new crisis. Officials here in San Diego say they're trying to get ahead of the crisis, donating personal protective equipment and creating a brand new task force to make sure Mexico's coronavirus struggles don't cross the border. But health officials say they already have. The U.S.-Mexico border remains closed to non-essential travel, but officials say hospitals in Chula Vista continue seeing a large number of COVID-19 cases due to legal crossings from Tijuana. They include workers in high contact jobs such as grocery stores, driving delivery vans, and working in personal care positions. This virus knows no boundaries. We are united and stronger than ever. In his daily press briefing Tuesday, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner joined Tijuana Mayor Arturo Gonzalez Cruz, announcing the donation of 1,000 3D printed face shields and five ventilators for use in Tijuana's hospitals, as well as a new bi-national regional task force the San Diego Region Border Unified Command, charged with monitoring and responding to the impact. The Border Command meets twice per week 
shares data. CBS 8 also collected data from the county's Office of Border Health. It shows of the 388 non-resident COVID cases in San Diego County, 33 are Mexican nationals. Officials add of the recent cases diagnosed at the two hospitals in Chula Vista, at least half report travel across the border. So what prompted the city to act now? We asked. It's basically our job to um, look at any hazards within. Executives at both Sharp and Scripps have written federal officials in this letter obtained by CBS 8. They're asking for urgent action on behalf of health care providers on the U.S.-Mexico border, including temperature checks and a mandatory quarantine for anyone entering who's suspected of being infected. For now, Acting Secretary of Homeland Security Chad Wolf says he will brief the media Wednesday about his recent visit to the San Ysidro Port of Entry. Thanks, Lamore. Today, several top U.S. health experts testified before a Senate panel by video conference to discuss reopening the country. This is White House, uh, House rather, Democrats released a massive new stimulus plan that's already getting pushback from Republicans. Skylar Henry has more. And there are several checkpoints. Dr. Anthony Fauci warned against reopening the country too soon, as he and other top health officials appeared remotely before the Senate Health Committee. There is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control, which in fact, paradoxically, will set you back. Officials say they're working to help states get the capabilities for more testing and contact tracing, and the CDC director says more guidelines for reopening states that the White House reportedly suppressed will be published soon. As we work through the guidances, a number of them go for interagency review. Dr. Fauci said a vaccine could be ready by late fall or early winter. We have many candidates that hope to have multiple winners. But the FDA commissioner, Dr. Stephen Hahn, could not guarantee an eventual vaccine would be available at no charge for all citizens. Sir, the payment of vaccines is not a responsibility of FDA, but I'm glad to take this back to the task force. House Democrats unveiled their new proposal for another massive coronavirus stimulus package. They're calling it the HEROES Act. The measure includes funding to state and local governments, hazard pay for frontline health care workers, and additional direct payments for many Americans. This is an historic challenge and therefore momentous opportunity for us to meet the needs of the American people. This is not a time for aspirational legislation. This is a time for practical response to the coronavirus. The House is scheduled to return to Washington Friday to debate and vote on the bill. Skyler Henry, Capitol Hill. The San Diego Community College District has joined a lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Education. Districts in L.A., Sacramento, Fresno, and Los Altos Hills are suing Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, claiming eligibility requirements for coronavirus emergency student aid are unconstitutional. Those restrictions prevent undocumented students and students in the DACA program from receiving aid. California Community Colleges serve an estimated 70,000 undocumented students many of whom have DACA status. Classes at San Diego State and other CSU campuses will be primarily online for the fall semester. Chancellor Timothy White says predictions of possible surges in COVID-19 cases later in the year mandate steps to protect students and faculty. San Diego State will offer what is called a flex model that allows certain lab, art, studio, and performance-based courses in person along with virtual teaching. The university will also offer expanded online activities and student support services and begin opening campus in phases, starting with faculty doing research. Tonight, another casino is announcing plans to reopen with new sanitation protocols in place. Saquon says it will start welcoming people back next week, Wednesday. It closed back in March. Some slot machines will be off in order to space out players, and only three people will be allowed at table games at one time. The casino says all playing surfaces will be sanitized frequently. San Diego healthcare and frontline workers will be honored with a flyover by the Thunderbirds this week. The Nellis Air Force Base Squadron will perform flyovers over San Diego at noon on Friday. Six F-16 Fighting Falcons will streak across the sky at noon on Friday to honor healthcare workers, first responders, military, and other essential people working during the pandemic. Today, three people were rescued at Sunset Cliffs after serious incidents. First, a woman was rescued this afternoon after falling more than 30 feet onto the beach below. 
a helicopter hoisted her up and took her to a hospital. Two people in their early 20s had to be rescued after they were caught in a rip current at Sunset Cliffs tonight. We're working on learning more about their conditions.